Welcome to Service Sharp. This is a podcast all about service now. We'll be talking strategy, architecture, technology, and everything service now. This podcast is not affiliated with service now. The opinions expressed are our own. We're just people that are very passionate about the platform. Join us for every episode. Welcome back. This is Jason Gibson with Service Sharp. Uh, with me today is Avery Williamson and Randy Haas. Um, Randy, of course, you know pretty well. Uh, but Avery, um, can tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, uh, yeah. No, I appreciate you having me on today. I'm very excited um, to be here. Uh, yeah, my name is Avery. I work at uh, Nelson Frank. We're a ServiceNow recruitment uh, group here, and I, I'm uh, based in the Philadelphia office here. Um, pretty much my job is to uh, connect uh, service now professionals with opportunities that uh, forward their careers and their lives. And that's, that's what I do on a day-to-day basis. And I have an absolute blast doing it. Awesome. Now, Nelson Frank, they're, 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 are they the largest service now recruiting company? <laughs> yeah. So uh, we've worked with over 30,000 organizations worldwide. Um, you know, we have, um, thousands and thousands of service, not professionals in our database. And actually, interestingly, we work with, uh, nearly three quarters of, uh, service, not partner companies. Um, nice. so yeah. And, and interestingly, unlike other it recruitment groups, uh, we focus specifically on service now. So other it groups might do, you know, everything under the sun. Right. But, but our goal is to, is to only find service now professionals opportunities, um, and, and also help our clients find the right talent. Um, right. And that's, you know, that's all we focus on. So that's kind of the, the interesting thing about our group here. Um, you know, and, and we have a true passion for the platform, but I'm blown away by the commitment to the, to the platform that some of the people on the team have. I mean, even going so far as to, to have their own developer instances, you know, it's, it's pretty remarkable uh, stuff actually. Nice. Very cool. So, you know, I was looking uh, on LinkedIn and Avery, I was reading a couple articles. Now you've you've put out quite a few, uh, but I think the most recent one I was reading was about micro certifications. I I think um, that was very interesting because I never thought about micro certifications that way. Um, but, uh, but showing that they have uh, a greater benefit, could you kind of go over that real quick and, and what you found? Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I, you know, I started writing articles and, and doing the videos on LinkedIn cause I saw a pretty clear opportunity here in the ServiceNow community to, uh, provide actionable information for people, um, you know, to give them tools that they would need. Uh, in their job hunt to help them, you know, uh, find positions that they love. You know, my whole thing, right. That I say in every article is I'm going to help you tell your story, right. Cause that's, what's important um, to, to find that position you love. The micro certifications uh, actually was a, a tip from a colleague and he was like, you know, I see you're writing these articles and a lot of them you're focusing on more soft skills like, you know, how to present yourself in an interview and what to talk about and what not to talk about. Uh, why don't we write about micro certifications? Cause those are something that, you know, I, th- I think, uh, are not really spoken about as much in the service now world. And I think they deserve a little bit of a shout. Um, so I actually kind of t- took a little deep dive into them and I, you know, I, I myself signed up for the, uh, fundamentals of service now course. And I'm of course taking the, uh, admin certification course here at the end of the month, but I, I was blown away by the amount of information that you can access about the platforms through the now learning uh, portal. Um, and I realized, Hey, this is something that would really help my candidates and it would also help them distinguish themselves. You know? So one thing that I wrote about was, um, you know, the HR, right? So there's a little micro certification you can do for HR. Um, and I think that that's, you know, that's something that, that shows people that you have a commitment to learning this platform and a commitment to growing with it as it grows. Cause of course, as we're all familiar, it's, you know, expanding, 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 and there's so many different things happening with it. It's, it's hard to kind of calm the chatter and have, you know, a voice in that crowd as a professional and say, this is what I do with this platform. Here's how I do it. You know, and that was kind of my goal with the micro certifications little article was to teach people that these are out there for you. They're a free tool for you to access. And they're, they're a really great thing to kind of grow as a professional. 
Absolutely. You know, and I, and, and I have, uh, you know, a lot of us have put a lot of focus on the main certifications, uh, which are great generally as, as general certifications, you know, I, I it is whether it's admin or developer or ITSM or, you know, one of those different certifications. But, I, you know, I really hadn't thought about the micro certs that way. And I'm, and I'm glad you wrote the article because that sparked me to think, okay, maybe I need to get some of these micro certifications. Just if nothing else that I have them, so I do most certifications because I want them, not because I'm looking for a role, but I could see how if you were looking for a role, that'd be really valuable. Yeah. And you know what? The other thing is, is that they're just fun. I mean, you just get to learn a new skill and a new thing. And that's, you know, one thing that I really appreciate about this community is that everyone's, you know, thoroughly dedicated to growing, you know, and that's, that was, you know, that was kind of my goal was to explore that topic and and learn more about that. Awesome. Yeah. So let me ask you a question real quick. What do you think the, the, the very top uh, skills that you need to, to really land that good role? What, what are the, the top skills you would need to, um, to get the, I guess it would be the dream job? Sure. Yeah. So that's a, that's actually a pretty, pretty complicated question. Um, because as I've recognized it and, um, you know, everyone has different goals within the platform. Um, and your dream job might look radically different than someone else's. You know, a lot of people love going out and doing requirements gathering and then going home and, and doing the hard coding and producing outputs, you know, based on, um, based on their customer requirements, you know, and those positions are out there. People love that, you know, that stuff, those kind of remote developer roles. Uh, a lot of people, you know, maybe say you're, you're a solutions architect, right? And you just want to go on site every day, have your team and work together towards a goal. Um, you know, so when you say, you know, how do you find your, your dream uh, job? I think the question kind of needs, kind of needs to invert itself and we need to look, okay, like what exactly are our goals with our career? You know, what do we want to do to make us happy? What, what fulfills us? Uh, and how do we get there? You know, and that's part of what I love about Nelson Frank is I get to have these conversations with people all day about their goals. You know, just the other day I was speaking to a, to a young gentleman who uh, recently had a, had a kid and now he wants to switch to a more uh, remote role. Right. Uh, which is, you know, the, the need there is obvious, you know, he wants to, to be there for his family and he's going to try to utilize his skills, um, to, to develop, uh, you know, a strategy for, for his, uh, you know, well-being. And I think that that's one thing that I really appreciate about this community is, and, and here at Nelson Frank that I, that I love kind of exploring and learning more about is that everyone has different goals and I get to help them get there, you know? So, you know, that's, so it's really mostly just about highlighting people's skills, you know, and just learning what they've done and what they want to do and how I can help them get there, you know, and that's, so that's kind of what I would say to that. Yeah. Well, and I, and I think um, you touched on it earlier when you were talking a little bit about soft skills um, or mentioning soft skills. I, I think that's probably of all the things that are um, most uncommon. I know that sounds strange, but I think that those soft skills, the communication, the presentation, the you know conversations, those things are, uh, I think those are the, the more difficult ones to find and do you find that to be true um or you know is it just a perception of that yeah i mean you know the it industry is is unique in a lot of ways um you know i i think that you know so here's here's my background right i actually have a degree in poetry um so i'm like you know i'm like you know i'm the soft skill person yeah right um <laughs> You know, interestingly, I, I don't actually think um, IT professionals lack soft skills. I just think they have a difficult time translating the work that they do to people that don't do that work, right? Which is often a necessary part of kind of breaking into that dream role. Um, and one thing I love doing at Nelson Frank is is helping people tease out the intricacies of, of the work that they do um, and, and help them communicate to, to people around them you know, here's my story. Here's what I do with service now. Um, here's how I do it. You know, that's, that was kind of the goal with, with the article series as well was, you know,
know, I noticed a pretty clear lack of instruction about how to, how to go into an interview, you know, things you want to avoid talking about. Right. I mean, just, right. you know, what do you wear? Like, how do you approach something like that? You know what I mean? And I noticed a lot of uh, anxiety in my candidates about, uh, you know, Hey, I have an onsite interview. Like, what do I do? You know? And it was kind of like, for me too, it was a challenge because it was like, I, I, you know, I have to learn with you, you know, and we have to discover together the solution to this challenge that you're having. Um, sure. So that was, that was part of the goal with the article series, you know, is, is how do you, how do you do these kind of more, you know, of course, like you could be a JavaScript wizard, right? Like you can be the, the best developer ever. And then like, but if you can't tell your story to an employer, you know, you're kind of in a hard position there, you know, that's, right. and, that, and my goal was to kind of mitigate that impact, right. was to help people who I saw as, you know, being really amazingly talented and just needed a little, little extra help kind of telling their story. Sure. I love that. And I think that that's one of the things that is ignored a lot of times when people chart out their, you know, personal growth plan or their, or when they're at a company and they chart out their, their development plan, uh, you know, people tend to forget that communication is a skill that needs to be practiced and learned, uh, updated, polished, just like every other skill they have. Absolutely. <laughs> And we continue to grow in that way. And, and I, and even those that, uh, like, like, like you, that, you know, you have that like natural ability, you still have to work at it. You still have to improve. You still have to keep going. You still have to try. Um, it's not like you can sit back and, and say, okay, I've, I'm, I've made it there with all my soft skills, you know, um, and, and just let that go. It's like any of the skills that you're going to need to do these jobs, you're going to need to practice practice them and to stay on top of them. Um, just like you would by taking those micro certs, right? You're going in and you're saying, I want to learn something new. Well, you got to do the same thing with the soft skills as well. Um, to kind of gain that extra, um, extra skill that you might need in the extra communication layer, uh, that you might not have had before. Absolutely. <laughs> So I have actually, uh, interestingly enough, I have some questions here that I have been sent that um, a couple of people were asking. And so I wanted to kind of go over a couple of these. Uh, I think it would be kind of good to have your, your input on. Um, and so the first question, I've got a guy that is that worked f uh, for me. Uh, interestingly enough, he was a front end web developer, um, super great guy. He just they didn't have the, the work form at the organization I was at. And we had lots of ServiceNow stuff to do. So they sent him over to help build some stuff on the ServiceNow side. And I trained him from uh, to do the service now type of development. It, it is a little bit different than what your normal, you know, full stack developer is going to be doing. Um, and so he ended up loving it and just absolutely falling in love with the platform. And now he is um, the team lead for the organization that I'm no longer with. He took my place when I left. Mm -hmm. um, and so the, what I'm finding though is front end web well for people who've never been in service. Now they start with this resistance. I don't like it followed up by, um, well, this is kind of cool to just fall in love with the platform. Uh, the question came um, that says, basically, I've been a front-end developer for five years. What path of transitioning towards ServiceNow development look like? So how would you recommend somebody go from being a front-end web developer if they like the platform, how to get into becoming a ServiceNow developer? Sure. Yeah, no, I appreciate the question. Um, from what I've seen, you know, in my brief time here, um, I, you know, my candidates that have very little experience, um, I wouldn't say very little, right. Um, but some experience, um, can still get positions in the service now world. It's just a different kind of fight. And it's also one that requires a really specific job, uh, to come across my desk. You know, I think, um, I think as far as that question is concerned, I, I would hit up the now learning portal and I would just start, you know, just voraciously consuming material on that. And just like you mentioned, just getting those certifications, 
um, and attending, I think, you know, the snug groups are a great thing. Um, you know, those service now user groups are great places to go out and meet other professionals and, you know, maybe kind of network with them and discover some, perhaps there's a contract or like a part-time thing that you can do in your, in your area, um, to start getting some hands-on experience with that platform. Um, and then that would, that would be a perfect way to kind of, kind of find your way into that ecosystem, uh, from what I've seen so far. And, and one of the things that I found, um, as kind of a good way to get in there is to, to go to, you can go to the snugs, go to the developer meetups, meet some of the people, the people in our community, uh, the ServiceNow developers, um, especially if you come to the ServiceNow developer meetup and you meet some of these guys and you, and, and you talk to, you know, uh, somebody like Heather or Melissa or, you know, anybody who's been working with the platform, um, they want to show you and to teach you and they are so willing to answer any question you have. And so I would say one of the the best things to do is like you said, go try and get as much knowledge on it as possible. Um, But I, I would say reach out to the community and let them help you fill in the gaps of knowledge that you don't have. And then believe in yourself enough to go sit in front of somebody and say, hire me because I'll get the job done. Yeah. Because the reality yeah. is sometimes that's all it takes. Yeah. And, from and a I mean, go ahead. Uh, guys. Yes, I'm going to say, uh, from a practical perspective, uh, when you're coming from full stack developer role into the service now role, um, there's going to be some things you have to unlearn um, in order to pick up the service now because service now, uh, from a technical perspective, takes what you write and say JavaScript or something like that, and then it does stuff on the back end. And so, what I have seen when I've hired people that have been full stack and brought them into the service now environment is having to learn what service now already does for you instead of assuming that you have to write the whole thing yourself. And uh, yes. so just being willing to come in and unlearn a few things and not assume that you know how to do it just because you built it, you built those pieces before because service now may already have it and you may just need to hook into it. And I think that's why when uh, they come in initially, they don't like the platform because they don't understand that portion of it. But as they develop and they spend more time in the platform, why they end up loving it is because on some of the heavy lifting is done by service now and, and it makes their job uh, a lot easier and they can move, uh, they can move quicker to, to, to get their solutions out um, versus you know, regular front end web development. I mean, you do have to connect everything and build everything. And there's no, uh, there's no doubt that you're not getting as much completed and out to the customer. So, um, so the next, I think uh, when it comes to uh, the number of jobs, uh, is there any trends going on right now? I know that um, there's been, um, a big push for service now service now is growing real bad, real big, but is there any kind of, uh, trends for specific roles or anything like that that you're seeing? Yeah. So, uh, that's actually kind of the topic of, uh, an article that I'll release next, uh, Wednesday. Um, but I think with the release of Orlando, we saw some pretty good indicators about how, how the job market is going to shift and change. Uh, and I think a lot of that is, is going to move towards automation. So, you know, there's always, 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 always a demand for really skilled developers. Um, you know what I mean? And, and that's just, that's not going to change. Um, but I think as service now becomes more specialized, um, you know, people are going to want to kind of take a look and, and, and kind of take inventory of their skill set and discover what they specialize in and start working really hard on that too. Cause I think that, you know, as, as things shift and change, you know, with the platform, uh, a different kind of landscape of, of talent is going to need to appear. And I think, you know, the amazing thing that I've seen already is that people are already uh, approaching and tackling that problem. You know, so I think, you know, if, if I were to say, you know, what, you know, what is in high demand, it's always developers. It's always just hands on keyboard. You know, can you write code? Like, can you produce custom applications? That's, you know, 
you know, that's what I would say is, is always kind of needed. Sure. Sure. <laughs> All right. So let's, uh, let's do this. We're going to need to take a quick commercial break, uh, listen to our sponsor and um, then we will be right back with more questions uh, with uh, Avery Williamson. And uh, we'll look forward to that in just a second. So uh, listen to our sponsor and uh, that's how we pay the bills and we'll, This podcast was made with Anchor. Anchor is the easiest way to create and publish your podcast. It's free. Creation tools with it allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Helps you distribute your podcast. It's super simple to publish to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, any of the major ones. You can make money from your podcast. There's no minimum listenership, so uh, they make it super easy to monetize. It's really everything you need to make a podcast in one place. So why don't you go out and download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm and get started. All right. Uh, we are back. Uh, we have Avery Williamson on the phone call with us. Uh, and, of course, Randy Haas. Uh, so I just wanted to uh, kind of fill everybody in. We are having a quick conversation with uh, with Avery about um, lots of different things, of course, uh, with the recruiting side of things. Um, so I do have some more questions about uh, the, the the person who is the self-taught programmer and things to that effect. Where should they focus first if they're wanting to, say, get into doing some ServiceNow stuff? What is their initial focus? Where should that go? Oh, yeah, sure. So, so you mean like somebody who's kind of just taken like, uh, you know, Code Academy classes or something like yeah. that or like Udemy? Yeah, so... Um, actually Nelson Frank has, has an entire office dedicated to contract, uh, work, which I think they do a really remarkable job over there. And I think it's a great place. You know, a lot of the tactics that I've seen by some of the candidates that I speak to is, you know, maybe they don't have enough experience like your friend who's a full stack developer, right? Um, right. one thing that they'll do is they, maybe you'll do like a six month contract or something like that with a, with a service now, um, client and then, you know, kind of get into the platform that way. Uh, contacting the Nelson Frank contract team is, is a great way to kind of find the, find some, you know, short term, like, you know, entry level work here, uh, into service now. Uh, again, you know, I, am going to sound like a broken record here, but I think the now learning platform is a great tool. Uh, I think if you can, you know, like learn and get those micro certifications, get that admin cert, the developer cert. Um, you know, those are great ways to demonstrate to people that you're ready to tackle uh, their needs on the platform. Um, and then the final thing that I would say is, is produce your own instance. I mean, that's a really amazing tool that you have access to right now that you can go in and play around with and, and start learning the platform today. You know, so the, those are the three strategies I think I would approach the problem with. You know, it's great advice. You know, I love that uh, ServiceNow has made those tools available. Uh, they recently revamped the learning platform and added, uh, you know, added some more stuff to it. They always do a great job of uh, trying to get that information out there. But that personal developer instance that you have access to, uh, that is an amazing opportunity. And uh, I like, I love that that was highlighted. Now. Yeah, I don't know. I honestly, I don't know a single developer that develops on the platform that doesn't have his own personal instance as well as all of the company instances so he can go check what the base platform is and and make sure that there's no customization that's causing a problem and things to that effect i mean they it really is a good tool to use even for experienced developers um one of the things i find about this this particular question though is um they don't know where to start but right now service now with that learning portal has basically the foundations class and, and Avery, tell me if I'm wrong, isn't it, uh, aren't they able to take a test, take the admin test? Uh, I think until March 31st, uh, yeah, if they take the class. Yeah. So that's actually, uh, a colleague sent that to me every day when I get home from work, I watch videos or podcasts or read the forums, you know, about service now, just so I can get, so I can speak to people properly. Um, and you know, a colleague sent that to me and said, if you take this fundamentals course, you know, before March 31st, you get a free voucher to take an admin cert. Uh, and then that's, you know, that's pretty much all you're going to need to know. You know, it's like, once you, once you have that cert, you know, you take, I think it's like six hours of video, seven hours of video courses. Mm -hmm. Um, then you, you learn, I mean, just a ton about the platform. 
And I think typically uh, the admin cert, you know, even if you didn't take it with this course is, is relatively affordable. I think it's like $75 uh, and you get a, uh, you get three free tries or, or three tries with that. I, I believe um, I might be wrong about that, but yeah, until March 31st, if you take this course, you get a, a voucher for that admin cert. And for me, if you're just getting into it and, and you want to get that first job, um, you know, getting that admin cert and getting a little knowledge around it. And my first job in, in back in, or in IT, interestingly enough, I was I ran companies for 15 years before I got into IT. And so when I got into IT and I decided that I wanted to uh, be a developer, I went uh, <laughs> I went to uh, to somebody that I knew fairly well uh, to happens to be on this call and I said, you know, hey, I want to get into IT and he said, well, I'm hiring a developer and I said, okay. I said, well, I'll do it and he says, well, what's your experience? I said, I don't have any. And he goes, <laughs> so, uh, needless to say, it just took, I went, had to go prove myself. So I went out and I, I, I built some stuff that he liked. Then I got an interview and we got in the interview and they're like, we, you know, hey, I, what are you doing here? Basically. I mean, you don't have, you know, any experience. I'm like, well, I, I can do the job, you know? And the reality is they didn't hire me full time. They went, you know what? We kind of like this guy. Let's give him a chance. And they gave me a six month contract. Yeah. So if you want an opportunity, you have to take that risk and to take that first initial six month contract, like you said, you know, you know, and then, you're taking a risk and it's scary, but I've, I've never been sorry that I took that first step. Absolutely. And yeah, like I mentioned, Nelson Frank, I mean, we have a whole entire group here that's just dedicated to finding people contracts within the service now world. Um, so that's a remarkable resource for people to use, you know, if they have, you know, kind, kind of anxiety about starting that search. Um, cause they have, you know, proprietary connections and relationships that, that can help you find that initial step. You know, and and over here on the perm side too. I mean, every once in a while, I'll get a, a junior developer role, uh, maybe an admin role. You know, um, and those are great opportunities to explore and, and learn about. You know, there's there's no reason not to have that information. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now I have a question. So Nelson Frank is specializes in service now. I mean, that's 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 it. So obviously, you feel like the job market is going to be here for service now for a long time. Um, so what are you seeing as far as like the growth of jobs? Like is, is there a shortage of people in the service now market? Is there, is it flooded um, or is it just kind of no limits for the next several years? Yeah. I mean, I think that's a complicated question and it's, you know, that's kind of like predicting the stock market, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, but I do think that there is some pretty remarkable growth happening and we can refer to the service now stock just to see what that would, you know, look like. Um, you know, and that's one thing that I love to look at just to see the growth of, of the company, um, you know, so I can get a better understanding of the ecosystem that it's producing. Um, you know, it's, it, when you, when you look at a company that has exponential growth, uh, like service now has and has seen and will continue to see, um, you know, I, I don't doubt that there will be uh, opportunities, uh, plenty for people, um, you know, in the coming years. Um, I do think, like I mentioned earlier, you know, there are going to be new challenges, um, that are going to, uh, kind of rise up with, uh, new releases, you know, like, like Orlando, um, having all these AI functions, you know, it's still something I'm exploring and learning about. Um, but those are things that everyone's going to need to kind of grow and adapt with. And one thing that I love about the community is that everyone's really excited to do that stuff. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. you know, when, when something like that starts happening and a new tool comes out or a new, like, uh, you know, um, a system that people need to learn, um, they're, they're so excited to tackle that problem and just approach that head on. Um, so I think that, you know, if, if people are concerned about jumping into this head first, I, I would just say to them that there's no reason for that. Uh, the service now world is, you know, rapidly growing and at Nelson Frank, you know, I get to monitor that and just, you know, see all the, all the, um, all the positions, you know, and, and, and help people find the, find their dream jobs. Awesome. Well, and that's one thing I like about knowledge, right? Is, is, is it's that, um, it, it basically shows me that this is bigger than I ever thought it was. And it's just every year it keeps getting bigger and bigger. And the one thing about knowledge for me as well is, is 
I just absolutely love, you know, the, the, you know, talking to the different developers and taking the classes and going through all of that. Um, but it's 20,000 people that are fairly like-minded that like the same thing. And it's, it's just, it's, it's amazing to me. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's an incredible event. I can't, you know, I can't think of another, uh, of another, of another product that has an event like that. Although I'm sure there are a few, um, but it's like you said, it's massive. I mean, it's huge, you know? Um, so I think it's pretty remarkable too. Right. So I, I do have, I know this is a question everybody knows that we're going to ask, but so have you noticed any difference in anything when it, with the whole coronavirus thing? Has there been any, any talk about, Hey, we want more remote people or we want uh, something different. Is there any, anything changing because of the, the Corona scare? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think, uh, you know, I, I actually have been running around the office all day and I, you know, I do have a, uh, you know, we have a lot of work going on here because of that. Um, I, you know, much of my focus uh, with my social media presence and, and my content campaign with articles and videos was to talk about remote work. Because uh, I see that as a unique facet uh, with, with the ServiceNow community and with the IT community as a whole, you know, that is something that is growing quickly. Um, you know, I, I think the Corona thing kind of shed some light on the possibility that, hey, you know, these cloud platforms are perfect tools to allow us um, to work remotely. And I think that people are starting to explore that. I haven't really seen anything from that yet, uh, but definitely when I speak to you know my my friends and and, and my candidates in the community and, and talk to them about what's going on, many of them are working from home now, um, and you know and I think that that's a developing situation that we're going to kind of see see how it impacts the course of service now, which I'm I'm actually pretty interested to see. Yeah, I think that's a good plug to be for service now because. So the platform is capable of automating just about anything. Um, you can really increase your flexibility as a company by going in and, and doing some implementation work or maybe exploring new ways of using the platform. It's so flexible. Um, you could really make your company resilient by fully using it. Yeah, totally. And, and, and to be honest, you know, the platform itself being that a, a cloud service is, is very unique in the fact that not only can all the developers do it, but there's so many things that you can do to allow things um, like a service desk to be all remote or, you know, there's, there's so many areas of the business, especially in IT that can just be remote. Um, and that could shrink some of your overhead with, uh, you know, when it comes to facilities and things like that. So um, I, I kind of see that as same as you do. I see it coming. Obviously it's not here yet, but I, I kind of see it coming mm-hmm. and hopefully we're right um, because I think it makes it more efficient. But what would you say to that manager or that leader who says, I, I don't want remote people I don't want to do remote. I, I don't like remote. Um, what, what would be your recommendation to, to somebody who's, who is like that? Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I typically don't do uh, the business development side of things here at Nelson Frank. Um, you know, just from a personal standpoint, I, you know, I, I think that that's just a preference. I mean, it's, you know, it's, if that's how you want to run your organization, then that's, that's your call. I mean, it's not really uh, one way or the other. I, I do think you have a good point though, that, um, you know, Hey, the platform is a cloud service. Um, it, it doesn't need to be in one space. You know, you don't need, I mean, you can, you can develop service now on a, you know, on a subway. You can develop service now in a coffee shop. You can you you can make custom applications you know, on the beach. I mean, you can do you can. That's that's kind of the beauty of these tools. Um, and a lot of cloud services are like that. Um, but you, you know, it's it's not for everyone. Um, so I, I wouldn't stress that that needs to to urgently happen if that's not the right fit for your organization. Um, but I definitely think it's something that is worth exploring because um, a lot of candidates that I speak to want that remote flexibility, like the general. And I spoke about earlier who just had a newborn, you know, and that honestly makes a lot of sense for him. You know, I, 
you know, you have a three month old at home. Why, why would you want to go into work five days a week? That's, that's a lot of stress on your family. Yeah, so. Well, speaking as a manager and as a business owner, I think that from what I'm saying, the trend is going to be that that's where your competitive advantage is going to be is how mature your, um, your flexible policies are uh, going forward. Because uh, I don't, I don't see the trend reversing as far as we're such a mobile community. I mean, most everybody lives off their phone. I know people that don't even open up a laptop. They just use their, their, their iPhone for everything now. And um, they want their work to be the same way. You know, and when you make work be the same, um, as accessible as what, you know, what people are, are naturally doing, then that just increases job satisfaction and allows you to have, uh, you know, like I said, a competitive advantage. Plus you can recruit from, you know, you're not, you're not, uh, limited to your local talent pool, you can recruit from a long you know, distance. So you can actually find that one specific skill set, history, uh, performance, and unique blend. Um, sure. Well, and, that, and I think that, that there's a lot of, I think a lot of their fear is revolves around productivity. You know, how is somebody going to be pro- pr- productive when they're not sitting at their desk in their office? Um, and, and my response to that would be, I'm more productive when I'm out of the office because I have less people bothering me typically. Um, <laughs> and, and so it, you know, it works very well. Um, I think for a lot of IT people, because they don't really, um, it saves an hour, I guess in a lot of people's case, an hour or two of drive time a day so they can dedicate that time. Um, it's just, there's lots of reasons, but I don't think the productivity issue that is, would be the, what, what they think it's going to be. Mm-hmm. Well, I think that that's, you know, that's a cultural thing for the company and, uh, you know, a leadership question about, you know, how, how, much integrity and trust there is within their team. And, and there's definitely things you can do to increase that, to, to um, prepare for that. But I mean, also the reality is on the other side, there are some jobs that you can't do remote. Um, and there are some challenges you have to think about. Um, I'm playing the devil's advocate down, but there are some challenges you have to think about when you're doing a remote workforce, um, as far as community goes, um, that you don't have to think about when you have an office. So. Totally. Right. Um, I wanted to ask, give you, well, I wanted to give you the opportunity to talk about uh, some of the work that Nelson Frank's doing with the veterans. This is a program that I love that Nelson Frank has uh, that I've hired from and been uh, very pleased with. So I wanted to give you the opportunity to say a few things about that if, if you want. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, so, you know, it, it's called a uh, rebel it now. It's a new uh, kind of initiative that, uh, you know, the PR team is working on and they're, they're doing an absolutely incredible job uh, with it. Um, you know, they, they pretty much aim their efforts at people with a background in tech uh, and they're looking to kind of cross train people into a new career uh, in an ecosystem that is just hugely lacking in talent. Um, you know, service now professionals are, are in huge demand like we've been talking about. Uh, so being able to create new talent is, is the kind of solution there. Uh, and that was kind of the, the goal of the initiative. And I think it's really incredible work. And I think, uh, you know, as, as, uh, as, uh, you know, Nelson Frank grows, um, you know, the opportunities in that realm grow as well. And that's, you know, the goal is, is to find people their dream jobs, like we've been talking about. And, you know, I think that that community initiative is, is valuable. And I think that it's, it's only going to continue to, to get bigger. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. So, you know, um, I, I guess one of my favorite things that you guys do every year is the salary survey. Oh yeah. I see that. I see that every year, every year I download it. I, I don't know. I I'm, I'm obsessed with it. I love it. I think the fact that you guys do the salary survey is, is amazing. Um, the information in it is, is awesome. Could you tell me, you know, what is your favorite part about, about the salary survey? Uh, yeah. So I was actually just kind of flipping through that, uh, actually just yesterday. Um, I, I think it's a really well-designed document, uh, just, just from like an English nerd perspective, right. Um, because it, it, it allows transparency of information in a way that I don't think is, is really uh, apparent in a lot of industries. 
Um, you know, one, one remarkable thing that I, I love about that is that it gives people all the tools they need to make informed decisions. Um, you know, and I think that that is something I, I greatly value. And I think that, you know, that's kind of the purpose of that, <laughs> that survey. And I think that, you know, that's, that's what I really appreciate about it. Um, I do think it's really popular and I also think it's just really well designed, you know, sure. And I, and I like that it covers more than just, Hey, the salaries are this for this area. There there's lots of information. in it. It's not benefits not, too. Yeah. Yeah. It, it gives you a lot of information that you can take in to help you decide, Hey, do I even want a career in this? Right. Yeah, you know? totally. Um, yeah. And, and it's a free resource. I mean, it's right. there on our website, you know, and, and that's, and, and keep in mind, I mean, obviously with salary surveys or like any survey, their averages, and there's a low, medium, high kind of thing. So um, if you don't fall in the high category, don't be, don't be upset with your boss. But um, it, it is really neat to, to see that they have the kind of commitment to the employee to be able to push this out so they know how they rank and how they, um, how they look at it and go, wait, wait a second. Is there really this much opportunity out there? You know, maybe totally. I should look, right? And that's, I think that's part of the reasons why, you know, Nelson Frank does it. But uh, I really think it's a great tool for, for everybody. Absolutely. Yeah, I think there's no reason not to not to at least peruse that and kind of look through it. Yeah, absolutely. Adrian, I really appreciate you joining us. I know that your time is uh, precious and, and uh, we thank you for it. Is there anything else that you want to share uh, before we wrap this up? No, I mean, I, I you know, I, I know I... Uh, have some commitments here and I do apologize, but I, I really appreciate uh, you having me on and uh, allowing me the opportunity to kind of talk about all the, uh, all the, all the great work we do here at Nelson Frank. Um, and you know, should, should you all ever need anything or anyone in your community, uh, feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn and, you know, or, or even by phone, uh, that's fine. Um, you know, I'm, I'm always here to help the service now community. It's something that I actually really enjoy doing and I'm uh, passionate about. So. I appreciate your time and, and thanks for having me. Thank oh, you. Yeah, yeah. And love I hope to have you on sometime. again very soon. Yeah. yeah, that would be awesome. All right. Thank you guys. All right. Until next time. See you guys. Yeah. Thank you. We want to thank our flagship sponsor for this show, the Sharpstone Group LLC. Sharpstone is your source for all of your service now needs implementation, development, administration, strategy, and architecture. Contact the Sharpstone Group today at info at sharpstonegroup.com or 405-594-0100. We'd love to answer your questions or have you on the show. Contact us at servicesharp at sharpstonegroup.com or find our LinkedIn info in the notes. Additional sponsorship opportunities are available.